Welcome back everyone. In today's video, I wanna be talking through my design process that I've been kind of relying on for not only making parts that I end up 3D printing, but really anything that I bring to life from scratch. The key points that I wanna hit on is where to get started to save you the most time, how to scale up that design as you're going through your process flow, and then how to finalize that design so that it meets all the requirements or desirements that you have in the beginning and make sure that it functions as it's expected. So without further ado, let's jump right into it. So the adaptation for my design process is pretty standard when you look industry to industry and how designers and engineers sort of come up with ideas. It's a five-step process and that typically starts with the idea itself. You have some something in mind that you want to create or you wish you had a product that solves some kind of solution. So when you're in this ideation phase, the first thing that I think you should prioritize is doing your research to see if there are other solutions out there on the market that already exist. The number one reason being some Sometimes it's more cost effective, it's faster, it's easier, it's a more robust solution to meet the needs or the requirements that you have for whatever it is that you're trying to create. I think something that's really hard to avoid when you're in this ideation phase is working on the wrong thing. You want to optimize what it is that you actually pour your energy into. And this is a very critical foundational block to making sure that you actually start working on the right product right out the gate. Make sure you have very clear requirements. If anyone's familiar with Elon Musk's five design principles, it starts with questioning the requirements. Don't put yourself inside of too tight of a box that actually makes it almost impossible to work within to create something. You want to make sure you have as much freedom and flexibility because that will come into play later when it comes to manufacturing, some of the designing features, maybe even cost or scalability. You want to make sure that a lot of that isn't blocked by a requirement in the beginning that you didn't even need to have. So question those up front as well. Not only do your research to make sure there's nothing else out there that meets your requirements, but make sure the requirements that you have make sense. Are they too constraining? Are they going to be too expensive? Are they, are they serving a very specific purpose for your design? All right, the second step in this roadmap for coming up with a design is jumping into sketches, maybe even model concepts, and taking some measurements of the overall size of the product that you're trying to make, but also the adjoining features that it's going to be interfacing with. So what do I mean by this? After you've gone through the due diligence of researching to make sure that there's nothing else out there that meets the needs that you are trying to get to, it will always serve you very well to come up with at least one sketch if you can. Now, this is kind of a hot topic if you jump into certain threads with designers, especially people that are really, really good at modeling, they tend to say, once you get to a certain fidelity with your modeling practices, it's okay to just jump straight into a model. And I'll be honest with you, there's a lot of times that I feel confident enough to just jump into a CAD model to make whatever part I'm thinking about, especially if it's something easy, like a wedge that goes under my desk or a small bracket or something like that. I'll say the higher fidelity of a product that you're trying to come up with, it will serve you very well to at least come up with one sketch if you can, just to make sure that you're flushing out your brainstorming and your ideas on paper and looking at it in the real world or as close to the real world as your idea is going to get for now to make sure it actually is translating from a thought to something that you're trying to bring to reality. Now, when it comes to taking measurements of things, there's two big things that I try to picture here. One is if it's interfacing anywhere, look at those features on the parts that you're going to be mating with. So if maybe you're making like a phone stand, take measurements of like the radius of your phone or the length and the width, even things like the weight of the phone to kind of understand, you know, how, how heavy is this thing going to be with respect to the material I might choose or the overall form, fit, and function that I'm trying to chase after here, just to get a better understanding of the scale that we're talking about in terms of measurements. On the other side of that, it's worth it to even break out a ruler and start looking at approximate sizes. If you have like your sketch on, on one side of your desk, maybe at the other, have a ruler and start sort of picturing the actual, you know, volumetric dimensions that you're trying to achieve, you know, length, width, height, if people are going to be handling it, how does that come into effect? Is it going to be something that I can't put in my hand anymore? Is it going to be too small that I have to just have to use my fingers to activate maybe parts of a mechanism or something? Sort of approximate the overall feature size of anything that's critical to the application before you get into modeling it, especially that way you have a good baseline to establish your model on. Now, if you've gotten some sketches out, great. If you decided to bypass that and you want to get into modeling, that's okay. This is a good time to sort of rough out just a 
brain dump, if you will. Hop into your CAD software of choice and just start coming up with some, you know, little stretched out designs. You don't have to be specific with anything, really. It's just sort of brain dumping into a model a little bit. Now that you've got a better idea of how this thing is going to interact in the real world, um, now is also kind of a good time to use something like operation board or a pin board with designs, maybe from other people that you follow or just other products that you've seen out in the world that have features that you kind of want to mimic and sort of use that to go back and forth with, again, a lot of this just like fanning out on early design ideas, whether you're modeling it or sketching it and take some inspiration from others if you can. Okay, the third stop in this design process flow is going to be initial prototyping and testing. This is kind of my favorite phase and I think it's where everyone really wants to get to and is sometimes hard to have patience with in the first two steps, but now's the time to come up with your first prototype or your first design. This doesn't have to be the whole idea completely flushed out. This may even just be sort of a rough overall size that you wanna get a feel for. Maybe this is just key features that you wanna sort of model little pieces, you know, maybe it's an edge, maybe it's an interface. For me, I, I feel like sometimes this is where I'll like test out little blocks with different hole sizes. If I have like fasteners that I want to try out, maybe it's an interfacing joint. I want to print that out and make sure that it actually tests well with the part that I'm trying to mate with. So this is a cool phase where you want to have enough of an idea flushed out to take it to print or if you're fabricating it somewhere, take it to the machine shop or whatever to get those first couple of smaller, lower fidelity parts into the work so that you can take it in the real world and actually start testing it out. I'm biased, I am a test engineer by day right now, but I do feel like this is a crucial part to start criticizing the design and working through all the pieces that aren't actually coming to reality the way you thought that they would and taking it back to the drawing board or to the model and making those updates at a lower fidelity that doesn't impact a really high fidelity fidelity design. Again, this is an incremental stage where you can start out with those small pieces or the large piece with not a lot of features and then whittle it down into a rough shape that you want to take into your final approach. Now we're at the fourth step in the design, which is getting towards your finalized prototype. At this point, you should have done a good amount of testing on features, parts, looking at your overall size, and then taking it back to the drawing board to make sure you're flowing those discoveries back into the model as you're going through your design and test phase. And at this point, we want to start sort of narrowing down in on the piece that we're actually trying to make or the set of pieces that we're trying to make to make a more robust final prototype. So there's no hard, rule here. It's just coming towards a conclusion or a semi-conclusion to what you think you are actually getting to and what you want to achieve here that's meeting all of your previous steps and your initial requirements and desirements. So at this point, it's okay to get 90 to 95% and say that's good enough. Go through the process of manufacturing that finalized prototype. This is a good time to see how expensive is it going to be to source all the parts if you haven't already done so and source those to see what it's like to actually purchase the parts and get them delivered to you. This is a good time to finalize your material selection. In the previous steps, I would recommend, you know, you're using a material that you don't care as much about, especially like if you're 3D printing. Maybe it's a final engineering design that you want to get to where you're using like a polycarbonate or ASA or something else. Maybe it's more expensive or you just don't have as much of. In those initial concepts and in those initial test pieces, just use PLA or something that you have way too much of just to kind of turn out some smaller parts and not waste a lot of the good stuff. This is where you're flushing out your manufacturing process a little bit with your finalized prototype that you can then carry out to do some real world exercises, which is a good segue to something else that's very important here. If you haven't already done so, now's a good time to get feedback from the real world. It's easy to make stuff in a vacuum, using it for you know all the use cases you think it's gonna have and testing the edge cases you think there are gonna be. It's time to invite other people to use the part or you know show it to other people and open it up for some criticism of like, hey, what are the things that I'm just not seeing or what are the things that I'm in love with, but maybe the rest of the world isn't, if that's what you're going for if this product is meant to serve other people. If it's not, take it the solution in question and give it to somebody else and, and be like, hey, does this solve this problem? Let them see, you know, if it intuitively works to solve the problem that you're trying to solve as well. I'm going to kind of key in on a couple of other people I admire for their design principles. And one is back to Elon Musk. He has his five design principles when it comes to just general manufacturing and engineering. We already 
went over questioning the requirements, but the next two pieces are deleting parts and processes where they're not necessary. If it had, if it's an assembly, reduce the count, get rid of stuff that does not need to be there. This is again, narrowing in on the design, making it simple, making it easy to build and to use and make sure it's only serving the critical functions. Be as critical of the part as you possibly can right now to make sure you're not lugging a bunch of dead weight around with this product and it's only carrying the things with it that it absolutely needs to have. Another one is at Amazon, uh, Jeff Bezos, one of their you know famous 12 principles is invent and simplify. And we're embodying all of that with this design process. It's okay to invent and create and make something really cool. But by the end of it, you wanna be whittling it down into something really easy, really intuitive, clean. You know, I, I get it, aesthetics really play into design and it's fun to really get deep on it, but make sure that they serve a good enough purpose and they're worth the money or time you're gonna be putting into actually making those things. All right, now we have hit the fifth pillar in this design process flow, and that is final product release. So if this is just to you, you've gone through the testing, you've let other people try it, you've iterated, and I did wanna point this out. I don't know if I made a good enough point about it while I was going through the video, but at every step in the process, you can always jump back to the beginning, you can jump back to the middle, you can jump back to any point in the process flow to refine the design. This is meant to be iterative, it's meant to be cyclical. This is not just you know linear all the way through and then you're done and you can't revisit a preceding step, you almost need to. You need to be constantly getting to the next phase and be willing to jump all the way back to the beginning if you have to. So at this finalized product portion, I wanna make sure that you mentally check that you did enough of that iterating. And also know that if you're gonna say this is it, this is final, and you've done all your user testing and your internal testing, and you've got it pretty much dialed in to where you're happy with it and you think it's the final solution, and you go through the final you know step in manufacturing it, I wouldn't go overboard here unless you, know, you have that much confidence and anticipate if you can that there is probably going to be a little bit of feedback that you still may need to inject into this design later on if you can incrementally scale up from this point please do that um, and i'll give an example when i was making some part for a woman that i was working with out in alabama when i came up with those original design concepts for her the first thing i did when we had kind of finalized on what we wanted it to be i only sent her a handful in the select colors that she wanted like one of each color and sent them to her and went through the entire process to make sure that when it got to her doorstep and she opened it and used it, every single one of them was satisfying the requirement that she had in the beginning before I sent her the entire lot of several hundred pieces just to find that, oh no, every single one of them has one very small problem and it could potentially break the manufacturing you just put all that effort into and, and cause you to have to go back. If you're selling products, these are when refunds come into play and stuff like that. So you, you want to avoid that as much as possible. So I would try to incrementally scale from here if you can, but do it quickly. Again, don't don't just put it out, find out there's problems, and then sort of camp and wait around to see if you can, you know, batch a lot of changes that need to go back into the design. Immediately make those changes and immediately put that into your process for actually building the part so that you're not, for one, losing track of the, the, the defects that may come about because there's a good chance that they still will. But also it's just cleaner and faster and more efficient to make sure that you're giving the best possible product to your customers or if it's for you with your use case, you're solving the problem best as you possibly can in a timely manner. Thanks everyone for watching, I really appreciate it. And if you could, please comment below if there's something that I missed either with explaining an important part of my process that you'd like to hear a little bit more about, or if there's something crucial that I just didn't even include at all that you feel like is really useful for anybody else getting started with creating their own design process, starting from scratch, or just something that over time you feel like has been humongous for your own designing. I would love to hear it and I'm sure others would like to hear it too. And as always, please like and subscribe to my channel if you wanna pick up on on some more design ideas that I'd like to throw out there, 3D printing, tutorials, CAD, really anything that gets thrown together for creating stuff and making stuff out there in the real world, I like to try and procure as much of that as I possibly can. So I really appreciate everybody that's been sticking with me so far. And yeah, please uh, look into my channel, look into some other videos that'll pop up here on the screen that you can follow for other interesting topics that you might like to dive into. Thanks everyone.